Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on nonlinear regression. Nonlinear regression is usually used if you know that two variables are linked in a causal way. So, as with normal linear regression, we have a dependent variable and some independent variables. In the case we are taking a look here, we work with one dependent and one independent variable. But, as compared to linear regression, it's not a straight line on which or by which the two variables relate. This could be, for example, that for low values of the independent, you also get low values of the dependent. For medium values of the independent, you get large values of the dependent. And then again, for large values of the independent, you get low values for the dependent. So, more or less, a quadratic link. Something like this. Or, if you're into marketing, this could be like a saturation curve, which looks like a stretched S. All those relationships are nonlinear in nature, but we can easily test if something like this exists in our data by using, with SPSS, Analyze, then Regression, then we have here curve estimation. Of course, uh, curve esti estimation, we have our dependence. So let's stick here with spendings on fashion and clothing and try, for example, income. Then down here, we can select which model types besides linear we want to check. So we could add here quadratic, as I mentioned, with the saturation part, the S curve. We can choose logarithmic, cubic, exponential, and a lot other. I will stick with those few. Click OK. And we get an overview of 1000 cases. In this case, we see, because we have in spending some fashion and clothing, some zeros some negative values. Okay, the negative values must be wrong results, but still we have zeros. Could actually be that someone answered spending on fashion clothing nothing. And this is not allowed for S-type or exponential type relations. So in this case, if you see something like this, this tells us you do not have the numbers the type of numbers you need for an estimation here. So in particular, you have at least some zeros or negative values. So far, so good, but let's take a look at the other four results we get here. So for each relation, we get the R squared and a corresponding F test. So we see here, for all four situations, it's highly significant. So we could work with all four situations. We also see that the amount of deviation we can explain is larger for the logarithmic, the quadratic and the cubic version. So, but which should we select in the end? Well, next idea would be you could take a look at the, uh, at the F value which tells you also something about the suitability. So, in this case this would opt for select a logarithmic model. However, this is something which could work. So here, clearly speaking, logarithmic would be the better choice. But I would always recommend go with the easier, go with the simpler version. Meaning, if there's like almost no difference between the linear and the logarithmic version. Go with the standard, go with the default version of a linear relation. In particular, you also get in the next part here a graph on this. We see here the logarithmic part. That's this part here. And this is not really better suited for this data set than the linear line. So in this case, go with the simpler version, go with linear regression. 
only if there is a considerable difference in the R square values and the F values then consider the more complex relationship. This then was already everything I wanted to mention here in the context of nonlinear regression. So you could go into more detail and model way more complex nonlinear models. For this, we have with regression the part nonlinear. Here, you only have to specify the dependent variable, and then we could enter any type of relationship here. So you could, for example, go, say, spendings on fashion and clothing, that depends on age plus age times income, then add something like squared. Or here it's not squared, we have to add this once more. So something like this here. We need to go into uh, some additional um, options before we can start. We need to define our parameters before this. But this would be like if you want to run a way more sophisticated model. The curve estimation is just to check for a simple version which of the factors might have which type of impact. So that later on you can use this in the context of either a modified linear version or this nonlinear version to actually run a way more sophisticated model. So we keep it at this and I hope you learned something from this, you enjoyed listening to it and well, see you next time if you visit one of the other movies of the SPSS methodology. Goodbye, till next time.